Hello, this is Paolo, this is Conversation Artificial Intelligence and uh, today we want to dig into a lesson learned for entrepreneurs, AI product managers and uh, generally AI innovators. So this lesson learned has to do with the very common, if you like, technology, with the very important technology in the field of artificial intelligence. And in order to understand this lesson, what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna look into what this technology is, to begin with, where it is applied, how it's evolving, and what is the lesson that we have learned. Technology of recommendation engines. If you don't understand the word, don't worry, because it's gonna be very simple to understand. So let's start with the easiest example that you will understand, and that's Google. When you search something on Google, what you find is a, if you like, personalized list of uh, recommendations. That's what a recommendation engine is. When you search something on YouTube, you're gonna get a personalized list of videos. When you open your YouTube, you're gonna get a personalized list of videos. When you open your Facebook, you're gonna get a few ads, and those ads usually are somewhat personalized. That's a recommendation engine. When you go on a website, you're gonna get lots of display ads, and when you really look into these display ads, usually they have something to do with other things you have done on the internet before. That's a recommendation engine. So when the people start to use the secret sauce, the one thing that if you like has been revolutionizing the field of artificial intelligence and all the fields where artificial intelligence is used. This started in 2017, in particular connections with time sequences. What it is. Now, if you're not technical, we don't need to go into the technical details, but think YouTube. You might have noticed that it's two or three years that YouTube is very sensitive in their recommendations on your very recent history. Like if you, let's say, watch three motivational videos, you will see that when you scroll on your mobile, the, uh, the, the recommendation, you will see that you have three or four, uh, let's say three out of five or six uh, videos are very connected to what you had seen before. So if you think of this, this is a really drastic shift uh, because before the recommendations were always based on what type of person you are, what you might like. Whereas now the sequence and the timeline of what you're doing has become a big factor. This is where the deep learning, the secret source, if you like, is playing a role and now these recommendation systems now are evolving and they're finding kind of a balance between what, it, what you are as a person, what you usually are interested in, and what you're doing today or in, in or what you do periodically. So for example, in my case, I listen to lots of motivational speaking in the very morning when I go to the gym. And like as soon as I open the YouTube in the morning, I get the motivational, um, the motivational video. And instead, if I open it in the night, I get another thing. I get the artificial intelligence, maybe I get international politics because they know my habits. So that's where this type of technology is evolving. Now, what is the lesson learned? The lesson learned is that even though deep learning is so, if you like, ubiquitous and revolutionary in many ways, not necessarily always performs better. And if it does not perform better, what, what happens is that you would embark in something that has a lot of costs, costs of, uh, uh, if you like, maintenance, but particularly costs of creating the technology connected to data labeling and many other factors that I don't want to go into the details, but fundamentally, if you see it at high level as a manager, um, or even if you're a technologist, if you just detach for a moment from, you know, the very technological layer, just look at it at high level, basically technology, come, uh, technology like deep learning comes with the cost that has a lot to do with data. And so if you pay the cost, you want to have a return on investment. So the big lesson learned from this video is that before you embark in using this uh, winning but still complex technology, ask 
your data scientist is ask your team is there another way to do this and achieve the same results because if if the problem you're dealing with can be solved in a different way go for the easiest way first and save the money and the time and then you can uh, maybe if you find a use case that requires more complexity and, and more advanced technology then then you can use it all right now if you want to know more you want to go to more details i've done quite a few of the interviews in this area and if you want to know more about deep learning there are lots of interviews but if you want to know really more or you want to become a specialist of building products processes and innovate around artificial intelligence the place to go is my course on innodemia.com until the next time bye bye